Can you see that okay? Yes, that looks great. It's the right screen, right? Okay. Yeah, looks good. And thank you all to those of you who've joined us already. We're gonna give people a few minutes to get logged on and then we will get started shortly. Thanks to everyone who's joined already. We're gonna give people one or two more minutes to log in and then we will get started. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started with today's event. Thank you all for joining us on your lunch hour. My name is Haven Spanier, and I'm the Senior Director of Programming here at the U of SC Alumni Association. And it's my pleasure to get, it, get to introduce our host today to y'all. Um, but one reminder before we get started, we love to see all of your questions throughout today's event. Um, so if you aren't super familiar with Zoom already, there should be a panel just across the bottom of your screen. And there is a chat button down there. So if you can click that, you can type your questions into the chat throughout, and we will get to as many of those as we can at the end of today's event. 
But without further ado, I'd like to introduce our travel partners and our hosts today. So since 1972, Go Next travelers have explored alluring faraway lands and legendary cities across the globe. Each carefully designed Go Next program unites an exceptional itinerary with deluxe accommodations, unparalleled service, and value. With the perfect balance of adventure, education, and relaxation, discover your world at sea or by river with fellow alumni. South Carolina alumni travel partners with Go Next to offer many destinations around the globe on board Oceana Cruises elegant and inviting vessels. We also partner with Go Next to offer US River Cruises aboard the American Queen Steamboat Company's iconic and authentic ships. On each of these journeys, University of South Carolina travelers will have the opportunity to mingle with guests of their other of other alumni associations as well as fellow Gamecocks. With over nine years of experience traveling the world as director of business development and working in both domestic and international land programs, upper premium ocean, lake, and river cruise products, Zach's career has given him the opportunity to partner and connect with numerous alumni association travel programs and affinity groups throughout the nation. His goal has always been to champion the dream of discovery. He looks forward to getting everyone back traveling into the world, immersing ourselves in culture, and creating memories that last a lifetime. So thank you so much, Zach, for joining us today. I know we're very excited about learning all the travel things. Yes, no, thanks for the introduction, Haven, and it's great to be here uh, this afternoon, and I want to thank everybody for joining us and for Haven and the University of South Carolina for gathering us today to talk about travel. So we're finally in the midst of you know, the fog lifting and uh, people being able to travel and explore the world. And um, we're just really excited to be here and to present on two amazing sailings for 2022. Uh, we have, I'm gonna share with you today, our Tasman Tapestry, which is our Australian New Zealand sailing uh, for 2022, as well as our Majestic Great Lakes itinerary, which is a great domestic option uh, for 2022. So. Uh, just really excited to um, share some, some great destinations with you today, some great photos to get you all excited uh, for 2022 and upcoming travel. And then uh, at the end of the presentation today, we'll open it up uh, for some great questions as well. So as Haven mentioned, um, hang on, Let's see if we can advance the slide here. Um, as Haven mentioned, uh, Go Next, we are a family owned and operated company. Uh, we are based out of Minneapolis, and actually 2022 will be our 50th year in business. Um, our specialty as a company uh, has been on focusing on our unique partnerships with the use of small to medium-sized upper premium cruise ships. So we partner at the executive level uh, with Oceana Cruise Lines, with American Steamboat Company, with Victory Cruise Lines, uh, with uh, Scenic Cruise Lines as well in the European rivers. Um, so those unique partnerships uh, with this intimately sized uh, cruise lines uh, really do change the minds of all of our travelers when it comes to cruising. So uh, these small to medium sized ships, the largest ship we use is going to be 1,250 passengers on Oceana, and we go as small as about 170 passengers on our European river cruise, on our European river cruises. So it gives you the opportunity to really experience the world um, in, a, in an amazing setting at a great value. Every trip with Go Next is going to be value packed. It's gonna be rich in experience. So what I always say is uh, we, prof we provide the refinement, the cultural immersion, the incredible culinary experiences on board. Uh, we also provide a Go Next program manager as well. So these are individuals that you meet uh, when you're on board uh, with any cruise line that we work with. So these individuals are set up in the main lobby on board the cruise, on the cruise ship. Uh, you can go and have access to these individuals you can ask questions of these individuals. So they're there to, to help you. They're, they act as a liaison between Go Next and the cruise line, as well as the University of South Carolina. Uh, these individuals practically live on board. So they know the crew, they know the staff, they know how the cruise line operates. So they're there to help answer questions. If anything's going wrong, make sure you access and, and utilize these individuals. Uh, they're there to help you and to make sure that you're having the trip of a lifetime that you deserve and that you paid for, of course. So uh, our executive level partnerships, we also contract with the cruise lines uh, over a year in advance. So uh, part of our contract is price integrity. 
So what that means for you as a traveler, when you're traveling with the University of South Carolina in Go Next, you're receiving the best price and the best value in the marketplace throughout the entire um, time it takes to actually depart. So especially with Oceana Cruise Lines, um, as the demand is high for travel, especially in 2022, um, you'll actually see the prices increase with Oceana Cruise Lines as we get closer uh, to the departure date. Um, with Go Next, we actually honor that, that price point that we have going into the marketplace. So uh, there are often times uh, where we have a better price point in the market than you can actually find directly uh, with our cruise partners. So it's a great benefit to be traveling with the University of South Carolina um, and, a, and a great opportunity uh, to experience the world at a wonderful value. We also include Go Next private receptions as well. So we have a great welcome reception when you're on board, no matter where you're traveling with us. This is a great opportunity to get to know your fellow travelers, your fellow alum from the University of South Carolina, uh, but also the other Go Next travelers uh, that are on board. And typically we have uh, close to about half uh, of the ship for Go Next uh, travelers. So there's a, a large uh, majority of the ship is gonna be uh, individuals traveling with Go Next and other alumni associations. So it's traveling with like-minded individuals. If you've never traveled uh, with the University of South Carolina before, uh, this is a, a great opportunity and make sure you utilize Haven uh, as well to, um, to ask questions and what the experience is like and uh, maybe talk to those individuals who have traveled with the Alumni Association before uh, so you can get to know their experience as well. I like to say as a company, we provide the structure and take uh, away and, and care of all the things that make travel stressful, uh, but give you the opportunity as a traveler to really seek out your trip of a lifetime. So. Uh, our trips are inclusive to a wide range of activity uh, levels as well. So I get a lot of questions as to the activity levels on uh, specific itineraries, especially like an Australian, New Zealand itinerary. Um, you know, a lot of individuals will ask me like how much walking is uh, on tour? You know, are there, uh, are there days where they're a little bit more relaxed? That's the beauty of a cruise, right? It's the unpack and pack just once. Uh, you can be as active as you want to be within these itineraries that we are offering. So uh, you have the opportunity to pick and choose your shore excursions. So you can be as active as you want to be uh, during those shore excursions. Um, we have some days at sea uh, on Australia, New Zealand, and the Great Lakes. So it gives you an opportunity to rest and relax and uh, get ready for that next day of exploring. But there's so many things to do on board, no matter what cruise line uh, that we're partnering with. So if you, if you feel tired one day, you can hang back on board and there's plenty to see, plenty to do uh, when, when, when we do have uh, that, that time on board. So, um, but again, the, the smaller ships also do provide a better opportunity to see each other, to socialize, to really dive deeper into the destinations that the larger cruise ships just can't get into. So there's a lot of value uh, to uh, cruising uh, with some smaller, uh, on some smaller cruise ships. Uh, as well as, you know, cruising with the University of South Carolina as well. So uh, let's get into the fun stuff. So Tasman Tapestry is our first destination that we'll talk about today. Uh, this is an Oceana cruise. Uh, this is a 14 night sailing and it's all about experiencing and exploring an amazing part of our world. So Australia and New Zealand, we're, we're experiencing and discovering both the North and the South Island of New Zealand. We're then cruising over to Burnie, Tasmania and then up through Melbourne into Sydney, Australia. This is departing January 21st and coming home February 4th of 2022. And I've been getting a lot of questions in regards to you know, whether or not Australia and New Zealand are gonna be opening up their borders uh, in January and into February of 2022. Um, this is an ongoing uh, situation down in Australia and New Zealand. We monitor uh, Australia and New Zealand through our, um, our, our ground operators as well as Oceana Cruise Lines. I can tell you that this is a full ship. Uh, we are the only company currently that has space on Australia, New Zealand through Oceana. Uh, so it's a very popular itinerary right now. And we've, we've been getting a lot of demand for these bigger trips, right? These bucket list trips, which are 14 nights, experiencing you know, a destination that is a little bit further away from the United States. Um, so there's a lot of interest still stirring around Australia, New Zealand, but certainly we are monitoring uh, the borders uh, as they open up Australia and New Zealand. Um, and we would expect if Oceana were to cancel a sailing like this, we'd know sooner or later. Um, and it's without risk uh, when you are signing up for this sailing. Um, so it's, if you do have questions on that, we can answer that 
um, towards the end of this, but we do expect this cruise to actually operate as scheduled in January and into February through Australia and New Zealand. Um, any Oceana cruise that we uh, partner with, uh, we are leveraging their offers. Uh, so included in this sailing uh, is the Olife package, which provides our guests round trip airfare. And we actually contract, and this is a, a go next benefit that our travelers are experiencing um, with over 90 gateways uh, throughout the country. So um, no matter where you're flying out of, typically uh, this, uh, this offer for that free round trip airfare is included. Unlimited internet, uh, for all the staterooms, as well as the staterooms choice of either eight free shore excursion or an $800 shipboard credit or a house select beverage package. I would say about 90% of our travelers uh, will choose the $800 shipboard credit or the eight free shore excursions. Uh, that is the best value uh, for you to choose as a traveler. And with the shore excursions too, I'll be talking a lot about the port of calls uh, here in just a minute. I'll, I'll touch base on some of the things that you can do within these ports of call. Um, I always tell our travelers too, not every single port of call necessarily needs a shore excursion. Unless you want your itinerary completely packed with something to do every single day, uh, these ports are easy to move about. Um, Oceana always has a free shuttle to go into the city, city center if the city center is off uh, of the port of call that the uh, ship is actually docking in or that you're tendering into. Um, so there are lots of areas that you can go out as a traveler, walk around, sit at a local cafe uh, or a local restaurant and just enjoy yourself, immerse yourself into the culture, uh, be a local for the day. Um, or, you know, definitely you can always pack that, that itinerary with things to do each and every single day um, and be as really as busy as you want to be and see all the things that you want to see uh, as a traveler. So your first port of call, your journey will begin in the beautiful modern city of Auckland. Uh, this is a great area. Um, you are crossing the international date line, so you're skipping a day ahead uh, when you're traveling down to Australia and New Zealand. And then when you're coming back home, it'll be the longest day of your life uh, <laughs> when you're coming back home because you come back on, on the same day. Uh, but it is a, a remarkable city. New Zealand's so welcoming. Uh, the individuals there, the, the citizens of New Zealand are very welcoming to uh, U.S. tourists and um, you, you pop into any restaurant, any cafe, uh, you'll see a TV up in the corner and there's going to be rugby on. And that's a, a common uh, phenomenon that you see throughout New Zealand and throughout Australia. So it's a great way to connect with people right away. Uh, but your journey begins here. You're going to be embarking Regatta, which is a 684 passenger ship. This is a beautiful ship. Oceana is a five-star cruise line um, at four to, to three and a half star pricing. So the value of Oceana is incredible an incredible guest to staff ratio, 1.7 to one. So it's a very high level of service uh, when you're on board. So what that means to our guests is every corner that you're turning as a traveler, there's always somebody from Oceana making sure that you're having the best experience possible. Um, it is upper premium, but it's not stuffy. So there are no uh, formal nights uh, needed on board. So no need to pack your tuxedos or uh, any you know, extremely formal wear. It's resort casual on board. So we want you to feel comfortable uh, throughout your journey. Um, so just comfortable clothing, um, clothing that can be wear, worn in layers. And some of these days, it'll be hotter during um, the, as the day moves on, uh, cooler off uh, and cooling off at night. Um, Oceana has also gone through some amazing updates. Uh, so Oceana has six ships in their fleet and they've dry docked every single one of their ships and they've invested over $100 million in updates. So uh, they've uh, replaced uh, all the suites, all the staterooms, marble bathrooms, new light fixtures, all new furniture. They have new menus and dining options as well. If you follow Oceana on Instagram or on Facebook, uh, you'll see a lot of the Oceana Next updates. And this is just a re-inspiration of their vessels. So they took their already amazing ships and they made them even better. So when you're cruising in 2022 on Regatta, you're practically boarding a brand new ship, as you can see from some of these interior photos here. To pop into some of the staterooms that you'll experience on the R-Class ship of Regatta, um, every ship that's part of Oceana's fleet exudes luxury. So beautiful rooms, beautiful staterooms, great amenities on board. This picture gives you an idea of what the staterooms look like from the Ocean View stateroom to the penthouse suite to the concierge level veranda stateroom, which is the most popular uh, stateroom for our travelers to book into that gives you that balcony that you can walk out onto um, as well as the owner suite as well so we book into all stateroom categories on board make sure you give us a call if you have any questions at all 
uh, in regards to uh, the state rooms and the state room categories, and we'd be happy to answer those for you. So your first stop uh, out of Auckland, uh, you're going to be exploring the North Island of New Zealand in the Bay of Islands. Uh, this is a, an area that's known for over 140 subtropical islands. I mean, take a look at this view here. Uh, this is just absolutely stunning. You have undeveloped beaches, you have big game fishing, you have historical artifacts within these areas. You'll continue sailing through Rotorua. And, you know, something about um, Australia and New Zealand, when you're getting ready for your trip, getting ready for your journey, everybody's excited to see Australia. It's what we know. You know, we know Sydney, we know Melbourne, even some of us know Fernie and Tasmania. You come home talking about New Zealand. New Zealand is a different world. The North and the South Island are both very different from one another. Um, and as you continue sailing, you'll, uh, you'll notice that these areas are really well known for their geothermal activity. So uh, in this area here uh, in Rotorua, you'll see these bubbling mud pools, these geysers as you make your way out to the countryside and as you can join uh, these great shore excursions. But this is an area known for this absolutely stunning and beautiful scenery. So uh, make sure that you take plenty of pictures, but also remember to you know, lower your eye from the iPhone or from the viewfinder within your camera and immerse yourself uh, in the surrounding uh, scenery uh, that, 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 that you've traveled there for. Um, diving into the city of Napier, uh, this area is known for their art deco, their architecture, their unbelievable countryside. It's a great area to walk about. For those of you who love wine, you can venture out to the incredible vineyards. You get a lot of Sauv Blanc within this area, um, sample the local vintages. Uh, oftentimes these uh, vines are actually growing you know, on the sides of these mountains. And because of that geothermal uh, activity, it, it creates a, a great environment and a thriving environment. Uh, so for some of the great uh, New Zealand wines, uh, as well as some of the Australian wines too, uh, that when you venture over to Australia, you might have the opportunity to sample as well. Moving into Wellington, and you can see the scenery changes uh, each photo, each port of call. Uh, here, you're gonna be exploring the city. Um, this is another area too. You, you can explore this area on your own, at your own pace. You can take the cable car up the mountain, for these spectacular views. I always love when I'm traveling to go to the highest point of the city, overlook the city below you and great, get those great photos, get those great group photos, um, or go out and rest on a local beach, spend the day uh, just immersing yourself up uh, in, in, in the sun. So this is, uh, you're departing January and February. So when you're traveling to Australia, New Zealand, you're going south of the equator. This is actually Australia, New Zealand's summertime. So this is a great time of year to be uh, sailing through Australia and sailing through New Zealand. Um, so you will experience, you know, some great temperatures down there uh, as well. And uh, for a lot of us in the United States, no matter where you're located, uh, typically it's a little bit cooler here. So um, it, this is a great uh, journey uh, down to Australia, New Zealand to experience some warmer temperatures as well. Um, here in Wellington, this is also a great opportunity for those of you who are fans of Lord of the Rings. Uh, there are numerous shore excursions where you can actually go out here in New Zealand and in Wellington uh, to explore some of those famous uh, film locations where they filmed uh, the, the Lord of the Rings. When you're on board Oceana, you are experiencing the best cuisine at sea. So this is some of the best meals uh, you'll have in your life uh, when you're on board and cruising with Oceana. Uh, on board Regatta, there are four specialty restaurants. They're at no additional charge. They are reservation uh, only. Uh, but some amazing uh, restaurants on board. Oceana actually spends more money on their uh, culinary experience than any other cruise line in the industry. And along with that, Oceana is not a nickel and dime type of cruise line. So all unlimited complimentary soft drinks, bottled water, specialty coffees, teas, juices, those are all included in your experience on board Oceana, as well as Victory Cruise Lines on the Great Lakes as well. So uh, there's a lot of value packed in here. Uh, the only thing that would be uh, extra for you are uh, wine and spirits uh, while you're on board. So to take you on just a, a brief little tour of the ship here in the specialty restaurants, you have Tuscan steak, um, an amazing I Italian flair, uh, modern take on a traditional steakhouse. You have red ginger on board, with bring, which brings bold Asian cuisine. Uh, this is a, a fan favorite uh, of our travelers. This is a great opportunity to sit down and dine and enjoy some of those bold Asian cuisines. The grand dining room um, is a uh, 
a flexible dining room. So there's no uh, reservation required here. They're serving European inspired cuisine by classically trained wait staff. You have top notch breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And on board uh, the R class ship, so on board regatta, um, at lunchtime, you do have a, an amazing opportunity to uh, go and dine at Jacques Bistro. So this is uh, the famous chef, chef Jacques Papin, uh, has created and curated an amazing menu uh, on board um, in, in the grand dining room at lunchtime for our travelers. Terrace Cafe is your informal, carefree place to dine on board Oceana. Uh, this is what you would consider a buffet, but there's no buffet on board when you're uh, cruising with Oceana. So think carving stations, grilling stations, all made to order, order. I always tell our travelers to never rule out Terrace Cafe because it is the carefree uh, dining area. Um, there's no better place on board to have breakfast. You, you can sit outside as you're coming into the port of call in the morning time. Uh, there's no better place to you know, drink your coffee, have your breakfast uh, before going out. Uh, for the day in exploring. Um, you also have great regional nights here too. So uh, Terrace Cafe, as you're cruising, uh, you'll be updated as to when these regional nights uh, will be planned on board. Uh, but these regional nights are all um, great meals which are inspired by the areas that you're traveling to throughout Australia and throughout New Zealand. So getting back into the destinations, Littleton is your next port of call as we kind of make our way into the Southern region, the Southern Island of New Zealand. This is a small French and British settlement on the banks just out, just southeast of Christchurch. Christchurch is always a highlight for our travelers. It's the most English place outside of the UK uh, that you can travel to. So you get a lot of history here in Christchurch with Captain James Cook, um, but it's a beautiful area. You can go out, you can actually take a punt down the river uh, there, the little canal there in Christchurch. They have a beautiful university, a beautiful church, beautiful gardens there. Um, great little walking paths. You can join a cycling tour. Uh, you can take a wildlife cruise throughout this area. So there are so many things to see and do, whether you stay in Littleton or you uh, take a short drive out to Christchurch. Uh, really is a remarkable destination in area of New Zealand. One of my favorite places and one of my most moving travel experiences has been in Milford Sound. So uh, today, you're going to be discovering the fjords of Milford Sound as you are completely surrounded by the natural beauty. You have these cascading waterfalls that start at the top of these mountaintops and make their way all the way down into the, into the sound. Uh, you have unique marine wildlife, too. You have dolphins in the area that like to follow the cruise ships. Uh, as you make your way into these little nooks and crannies throughout the sound, um, you can actually see penguins here as well. Some of the most rarest penguins in the world uh, are actually here uh, in New Zealand on the South Island, and a lot of them call Milford Sound uh, their home. And as you're cruising through the Sound, you can explore and enjoy uh, the amazing amenities on, on the ship, on board regatta. We'll actually be spending a full day cruising the Tasman Sea. And I love these days. I love being able to spend a day out at sea because you do get to take, in, take advantage of the, of the ship and everything that's going on on board. I always tell travelers too, you're on vacation, enjoy a spa day. So book that spa day on your day of cruising the Tasman Sea. Go check out a book in the library and enjoy some peace and quiet. Maybe go and check out the small casino that's on board. Uh, take a walk around the walking track here. Enjoy uh, the pool and uh, the, the hot tubs on board. Um, go and pop in on a lecture. We have great uh, individuals on board that are talking and diving deeper into the destinations that we're traveling to. Um, go and uh, you know, take, your, take your try at uh, uh, trivia or enjoy afternoon tea. There's afternoon tea, a traditional British afternoon tea every single day on board. And of course, nightly entertainment, some great entertainment on board that uh, our travelers thoroughly enjoy and uh, love to take part in. As you're cruising the Tasman Sea, you're gonna make your way into Burnie, Tasmania. This is nestled on the Northwest corner of Tasmania. This area is known, and known to have a rich history in paper manufacturing. It's also known for its uh, nature trails as well as their deep caves. So it's here in Burnie, if you wanna go out, um, you, know, you wanna be more active, you can actually go out and see Tasmanian devils and uh, you, can, you can actually see glow worms uh, in these caves here in Tasmania. So um, it's kind of one of those things that people think uh, when they're traveling to New Zealand, New Zealand's the only place where you get to see those glow worms, but you can actually see them here in Tasmania as well. So from Tasmania, you're gonna make your way and cruise into Melbourne. This is a bustling city. This is your home for two days. So we spend two days 
exploring all that Melbourne is known for. Go out, take a panoramic tour, um, enjoy the city. Um, you'll be taken out to St. Kilda. You can see these beautiful beaches and cafes and great restaurants as you explore. Um, the Shrine of Remembrance is a beautiful area. Again, that gets you to you know, one of the tallest points uh, there in Melbourne so that you can get these great views of the city below you. After spending two days in Melbourne, your journey will come to an end as you've explored both the North and the South Island of New Zealand, uh, bringing your uh, way home here in Australia, here in Sydney before making your way back home. Um, go next, we also offer a great two uh, day uh, post tour here in Sydney. So if you wanna spend a little bit more time going out and exploring all that Sydney has to offer, which includes the Sydney Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, um, the Rocks area, uh, where you learn more about you know, Captain James Cook and uh, all of uh, his great adventures. Um, this two day uh, post tour is, is a great thing to take part in. So spend a little bit more time in Sydney before making your way, bit, way back uh, to the United States. So that ends our journey uh, through Australia and New Zealand. And now we're on to the majestic Great Lakes. So uh, throughout you know, 2020, throughout 2021, uh, we've seen a, a great demand for domestic itineraries. And, uh, here, July 14th to the 24th in 2022, the Majestic Great Lakes is a great opportunity for those travelers who might want to spend a little bit more time closer to home. So this is a 10-night sailing on Victory Cruise Lines, again, departing J July 14th to the 24th, with a starting price around $54.99. Um, this is a, a great opportunity to explore the Great Lakes and to explore the Great Lakes in a unique way uh, on a beautiful vessel. So your journey will begin in the beautiful city of Toronto. We always do a one night pre when we're cruising with Victory. So uh, you're gonna check into a great hotel, centrally located hotel there in Toronto, get acclimated and uh, meet your program manager, get an idea of what the next couple of days is gonna be like uh, as you start to explore these great cities, these beautiful islands and the stunning waters our, uh, our great nation has to offer. You're gonna be boarding the most sophisticated and luxurious small ship in the Great Lakes. Uh, so this is an intimate setting uh, Victory One has two has 202 guests on board. You have 84 dedicated staff members on board as well. So again, that guest to staff ratio is what we look for uh, as a company uh, for our experience and for our travelers' experience. We want to make sure that you're having the best trip on your trip of a lifetime. So this is a boutique vessel, and it's the perfect way to really showcase the Great Lakes on on this uh, truly remarkable journey uh, throughout the Great Lakes. So. No stressing, again, it's unpacking and packing just once. You have complimentary shore excursions on board. So as we make our way from port to port, you'll have your choice of shore excursions uh, as we make our way through the, through the Great Lakes. Um, complimentary internet's also included. Complimentary beverages are included on board as well. Uh, you have beer and, lunch, uh, beer and wine with lunch and dinner and much, much more. Uh, there's so much value packed into our Victory Cruises. Um, and there's, there's so much to see and do and experience for everyone. Uh, so taking a look at some of the staterooms here, you'll check into uh, your all outside staterooms. So there are no inside staterooms when cruising with Victory Cruise Lines. So what we're seeing here is a C stateroom. This is on decks one and two. These are about 152 square feet. Um, all cruise lines are really good at utilizing space on board. The most popular staterooms that we see and the staterooms that typically go the fastest are our AA staterooms. Uh, these have uh, promenade access. So you see that door in the right corner there that gives you access to the promenade outside. It's a walking path that goes around the ship. And a lot of our travelers really like this. This is on deck four. Your stateroom's 161 square feet. They like to have access not only from the interior of the ship, but also from the exterior uh, as well. And that's why those AA staterooms typically go faster than the other stateroom categories on board. So as we continue our journey from Toronto, a highlight of your trip is going to be a visit to Niagara Falls. So uh, this is the entrance to the Welland Canal. And I'm always in just sheer awe at the power of the falls. So can these beautiful uh, views of the World uh, Pool Rapids uh, below you. Take a moment to capture these stunning views at Table Rock Park. Uh, this is a great area to uh, take this absolutely stunning photo. It's a great area to take a group photo as well. Um, be on the observation decks out there. They have a great little gift shop too for some souvenirs. So if you want to do some retail therapy, I always tell our travelers this is a great place to do so.
or take the opportunity to board the specially designed horn blower ships. So these horn blower ships are designed to actually go in uh, to the falls themselves. You have the outer decks, you can feel the falls or stay dry on the inside, of course. But you can, as, as you can see from this picture here, uh, a lot of the guests on board the horn blowers, they like to go outside. Uh, ponchos are available to you too, so you don't ruin your clothing for the day. Uh, but this is a great opportunity and kind of that once in a lifetime opportunity to experience Niagara Falls. I love the port of calls on the Great Lakes. So Cleveland is your next stop. Um, majestically located on the south shore of Lake Erie between the Welling Canal. Um, this is an underrated city. And a lot of the reason that it gets its underrated, um, it, it's, its underrated uh, value is that um, they, they're known here in Cleveland to really have a bad rap for horrible weather. Um, and that's typically in you know, the winter time, you get that lake effect snow uh, coming off, but this is in the summertime. Cleveland's beautiful during the summer. Uh, you'll have time to explore East Cleveland, the downtown area, the shoreway, the hop on hop off bus explores six stops in Cleveland. So you have the Cleveland Museum of Art, you have the Lakeview Cemetery where you have President Garfield and John D. Rockefeller are both buried here. And you have the Cleveland History Center. What I would recommend to travelers is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You can learn all about the history behind the rock legends of this area. And this is a great museum. Um, and it's, it's a, a fun museum, it's interactive, and it's a great way to spend your day here in Cleveland. Or go out and venture into the arcade. So if you're uh, a big uh, fan of architecture um, and kind of that Victorian era uh, structure, and you enjoy Victorian era structures, this is the place for you. So uh, you have two nine-story buildings that are joined by a five-story arcade with these beautiful glass skylights. It's identified as one of the uh, earliest indoor shopping malls uh, in the United States. So another great historical place uh, to visit while you're here in Cleveland. As you make your way into Detroit, you'll be pleasantly surprised at the beauty and the revitalization that's actually taking place in downtown Detroit. Enjoy the hop on hop off bus again. There's so much value in the hop on hop off bus with Victory Cruise Lines. This bus will take you on seven stops across Detroit. Uh, they uh, pick up and drop off about every 30 minutes within this area. You have the Charles Wright Museum of African American Culture. You have the Detroit Art Institute, the Historical Museum, the Fisher Building, which is that Art Deco style building. Uh, you have the Motown Museum here. You also have the Henry Ford Museum. This is a huge complex that's full of American history from automotive to aviation and much, much more. Henry, Henry Ford was a huge collector. And what you're seeing here is one of the presidential limousines. They have multiple limousines all lined up there as you walk into the entrance of the museum itself. You could spend days in this museum and still not see everything. Uh, really is a highlight here uh, in Detroit and one that I highly recommend as a traveler. I mentioned on the Oceana sailing, your days at sea, your days uh, exploring uh, the amenities on board are always a, 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 huge, uh, a, a huge advantage uh, when you are cruising. So you're not taking motor coaches throughout this area. You know, you're on your five-star floating hotel uh, throughout the day. So take advantage of the spa on board, grab a book from the onboard library, enjoy the sun deck in the sunning waters uh, as you are, are cruising the beautiful Great Lakes uh, enjoy the outdoor areas on board. They have these awnings that they put up as you're cruising uh, to enjoy some shaded areas as it can get warmer uh, in the summer months on the Great Lakes. Enjoy daily high tea in the Compass Lounge here or sit in on a fascinating lecture from a naturalist. We have historians on board. Uh, we also have some great guest lectures uh, with the partnerships that we have with the universities uh, that we partner with on the Great Lakes. Enjoy happy hour in the seascape, in the seascape tavern. Uh, this is here where you have that traditional English style bar. Uh, it's full of character. This is a place where a lot of people will congregate uh, at night as well <clears throat> before sitting down for a wonderful five uh, course dinner in the now coastal dining room. All open seating, menu of fantastic culinary offerings of regional inspired dishes. Uh, again, the culinary experience on board uh, will be a phenomenal one. Uh, for our travelers to enjoy. The coastal dining room is where you can enjoy a sophisticated atmosphere for breakfast. Again, multi-course lunch, multi-course dinners. Um, the ship is again, approachable luxury, 
uh, approachable luxury. So the dress uh, code here is country club casual, resort casual. So again, no packing, suit jackets or tuxedos or no formal nights on board uh, with uh, Oceana or Victory Cruise Lines. For a more relaxed vibe, uh, go for a quick bite to eat and enjoy uh, the grill. <clears throat> Experience a buffet style breakfast, lunch, and dinner, kind of like a grab and go, um, more casual dining venue uh, for travelers. You're going to be continuing your journey as you adventure, uh, as your adventure uh, continues and you sail into the port of Little Current. This is situated in the northeast corner of the Georgian Bay. This area is known for 108 freshwater lakes, and it's separated by the larger part of Lake Huron and the Georgian Bay. So today you have the opportunity to explore the islands, explore the island's history as you vis visit some, uh, an, some amazing highlights throughout this area. Uh, you have the cultural foundation where you can have a great welcome ceremony there, um, highlight the Aboriginal uh, uh, areas as well of Little Current and Sault Ste. Marie. So as you, can see, as you continue to sail, you have the Sioux Locks here in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Um, learn all about the history of the locks themselves. See the American Sioux Locks. This is actually the busiest shipping uh, traffic in the world by tonnage. Um, you'll also see the Canadian locks uh, used as well for the smaller uh, recreation and tour boats. That's actually uh, the one that the, uh, the Victory will actually be going through. <clears throat> you'll be taken in uh, through the, uh, taken the town uh, via the hop on hop off bus here. Uh, downtown Sault Ste. Marie is a great place to visit. Uh, you have the Tower of History where you can ride all the way to the top, uh, see those stunning views of the locks below you. Uh, the River of History Museum has all these great exhibits from fur trade to early settler history. You have the historic water, um, the Sault Ste. Marie homes where you can walk down the water street and enjoy these homes and see how the first settlers uh, actually lived within these areas. But you have these great little promenade areas too. Uh, you can take some uh, some afternoon strolls uh, down these quiet uh, quiet areas here in Sault Ste. Marie. A highlight for our travelers is always Mackinac Island. So make your way uh, into the National Historic Landmark of Mackinac Island, stepping back into the 19th century. Enjoy the Victorian charm of this area, this beautiful island. Um, since there are no cars allowed on the island, they'll board a horse-drawn carriage uh, for all of your excursions. So it's a really unique area uh, to visit and to explore. More than 80% of this area is preserved here in Mackinac Island State Park, which keeps it a protected area uh, from any commercial development. Um, here you can go out and you can explore the woodlands. You can see the stunning outcrops here. Um, enjoy a narrated to, uh, tour uh, on your horse-drawn carriage, which will take you to the Grand Hotel. And the Grand Hotel is always a stunning sight. Uh, this is a great example of Victorian architecture and uh, boasts the world's largest front porch. Uh, so it's a great place to sit down, um, you know, have a beverage, uh, have a little appetizer, uh, have lunch here at the Grand Hotel uh, before making your way uh, back to the ship. Or go and experience Fort Mackinac as well. Uh, this was a former British and American military outpost. Uh, this is the oldest building in Michigan. Uh, they, uh, do a, they usually do a cannon firing and a rifle demonstration. Uh, as well. So it's a great sight to see and a great, a great way to spend your day uh, here in Mackinac. So spend another day uh, sailing beautiful Lake Michigan on your way uh, to Chicago. And it's here where your journey will come to a close. You'll say goodbye to the Great Lakes and disembark in the lovely city of Chicago uh, before making your way home. Uh, so that will cap off uh, our uh, great adventures through Australia, New Zealand and the Great Lakes. But wherever your journey comes to an end, you've been introduced to these wonderful cultures. You've explored incredible highlights. You've shared wonderful meals with individuals. And you've walked the great streets of these areas. Most importantly, you've done it with these amazing people. You've made new friends on board. And you've discovered together. We've spent the last year and a half at home um, not experiencing, not discovering. And that's not natural. We are human beings. We want to go out. We want to discover these great cultures. We want to discover these great uh, areas that our world has to offer. And that's what traveling with the University of South Carolina is all about. 
it's a great way to see the world, to experience with like-minded individuals. And I always say people leave as friends and they come back as family. So I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation on Australia, New Zealand and on the Great Lakes. And I hope there's one of these trips that does interest you and uh, makes you wanna travel in 2022. And uh, as a thank you uh, for everybody and for uh, everybody jumping on today or watching the recording, uh, we want to offer a hundred dollar booking bonus for every passenger if you want to travel uh, if you want to sign up and book a great adventure in 2022 so there is a book by date of next week uh, next tuesday which is uh, june 22nd you uh you need to use the uh, the code on the screen here uh, that you see and i will have um, haven actually send this out too um, or as you're calling go next uh, to reserve your spot you can just say i attended the university of south carolina's a travel reception uh, this Tuesday. And we'll make sure to apply uh, that $100 booking code. But uh, we wanted to offer that as a special thank you uh, for, for joining us today. And um, certainly hope that uh, you'll join us on an adventure here in 2022. So with that, I'll open it up for any questions that anybody may have. Thanks so much, Zach. So as a reminder to everyone, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type those into the chat or the Q&A right now. So across the bottom of your screen, that panel should have both of those buttons. So go ahead and type away while we've got the expert here with us. Um, there is one already, Zach, that I'll read to you. Is the cruise ship the primary mode of travel? Yes, the cruise ship is gonna be the primary mode of travel. Um, for Oceana, so uh, to give you kind of an idea what day to day looks like, Oceana, typically you're, um, you're disembarking the ship early morning. So they come into the port of call typically around like eight or nine o'clock in the morning. And then you're back on the ship at like between like five and six o'clock at night, uh, just right before uh, dinner reservations start on board. Um, with Victory Cruise Lines, it's very similar. So uh, you're going from port to port on the, on the cruise line, on the ship itself, and then you're motor coaching out uh, to your shore excursions or into the city center. Great, thank you. And just so you all know, in the chat, I did put the University of South Carolina Alumni Association Travel Programs website in there that outlines all of our trips for 2022, including these ones that Zach talked about um, with some more info about how you can book and everything. Um, and on that note, Haven, uh, thank you for mentioning that. So uh, the Great Lakes, for those of you who are interested in uh, signing up uh, for the Great Lakes experience, uh, that is currently um, not on our website, but it should be up within the next week or two here. Uh, if you are interested in signing up for that trip, feel free to give us a call um, at GoNex and uh, we can put your name down. Uh, we don't require a deposit uh, for that, but we can put your name down, get you signed up so that you can receive that $100 booking bonus. And once that is finalized on the website and we have that up and running, um, we'll give you a call back and we'll get you all signed up for it. Perfect, thank you. All right, next question. What COVID-19 precautions are being put in place? Yeah, that's, that is a great question. Um, and it's, it's a question that's ever evolving. So um, the uh, health and safety protocols on both Oceana and uh, Victory Cruise Lines are um, top notch and they have the strictest health and safety protocols uh, of any mode of transportation or travel uh, here in the future. And these will be ever evolving. Uh, but what you can expect is um, on both uh, cruise lines, so both um, Oceana and Victory Cruise Lines, it will be a fully vaccinated ship. So as a traveler, you will have to be fully vaccinated in order to board either Victory or Oceana cruises. Um, things like uh, touchless embarkation are one of the things throughout COVID uh, that's actually um, improving uh, our, our traveler's experience. So you will have touchless embarkation. It'll be a smoother process than in the past. Um, it'll be easier to uh, gain access on board um, than it has been in the past. Things like um, COVID testing um, prior, or PCR testing prior to uh, boarding are somewhat already going away as we kind of make our way out of uh, COVID. Uh, but social distancing, mask wearing on board is another thing too that's also kind of going away as well uh, for our experience. Since it is a 100% vaccinated ship, um, we can expect some of the health and safety protocols that we may have discussed 
you know, two months ago, uh, actually being more lenient on board. But the things that they'll be keeping on board with Oceana and Victory are the enhancements in uh, overall cleanliness on board. So disinfecting uh, social areas throughout the day. Uh, those are things that they'll keep. Um, their, uh, their filtration systems on board. So the way that they ventilate these ships has also changed, especially with Oceana. Um, they actually dry docked all six of their ships and they uh, went into each and every stateroom. And instead of pulling air from the interior of the ship and ventilating it out, they're now pulling the air through uh, each and every individual stateroom. So they're pulling fresh air from the outside through a medical grade HIPAA filter into the interior of the ship. So um, that, that process of ventilation is an enormous investment that they've made uh, in making uh, cruising a safer environment and a cleaner environment uh, to cruise on. So their overall goal is to create a healthy sailing bubble uh, no matter where you're traveling in the world, which I think ultimately will make the experience that much better uh, when you're on board, um, no matter when we travel, no matter where we travel. Perfect, and you answered the next question about if you had to show proof of COVID-19 vaccines. It sounds like, yes, you would if it's a fully vaccinated ship. The next question, what are the total number of days for the Great Lakes tour? It's a 10 night sailing, so it's 11 days in total. You're coming back home on that 11th day. Perfect. All right, if you guys have any last minute burning questions, go ahead quickly into the chat, but I will send a follow up email um, within the next 48 hours. It'll have the recording of this session. So if you guys had to log on late or if you want to go back to something that Zach said, you can do that. Um, it will have the link to our travel page where you can learn more about these trips and book. Um, and I will include that discount code for you all as well since you tuned in today. Um, so you can get a discount if you do decide to go on one of these trips. But Zach, it looks like we got everyone's questions answered. So thank you so much for your time today. We all really appreciate it. Thank you. To uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for everybody for signing on. All right, y'all have a great afternoon. Take care. Travel safe.